more than enough. There is enough of him to go around, and he is provides us with lots of sustenance. <laughs> Sorry. <He is. laughs> Sorry. Let's do that again. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Gospel, Gospel Truth. Truth. I'm Dean. And I'm Audrey. And this week we are celebrating the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Just chugging along. Yep. The chug, big one chug, eight. Chug. Yeah. And this week we want to focus on the idea that Jesus is more than enough. There's enough of him to go around and he is more than enough. All right. But before we dive into all that reflecting, do you want to remind everyone what the Gospel Truth is all about? Of course. So the Gospel Truth is all about Audrey and I sharing our thoughts about the faith, the word happenings in the church. Hopefully by doing that, we can understand our faith a little bit better. And maybe you, the viewers, can get something out of it as well. Yep. All right. So let's dive into the readings. Let's do it. All right. So first reading comes from Exodus. All right. So if you remember, the Israelites have been freed from Egypt thanks to the miracle um, that God performed parting the Red Sea. And now they're trying to find the promised land and they've been wandering in the desert for a while. Yeah. And they're kind of annoyed. They're grumbling. And they're actually saying... I'm gonna die of hunger. They're, so they're actually saying we should have just died in Egypt because we don't have anything to eat. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're pretty mad, right? And, and God provides them manna from heaven and basically, like, there's this, it's like a, I don't really know what manna is, but basically, um, they were able to eat this manna mm-hmm. that provided them sustenance. Yeah. And basically, God provided for mm-hmm. the Israelites, which continues in the psalm, the Lord gave them bread from heaven, mm-hmm. manna from heaven. So that theme continues. Second reading, again, kind of seems like it doesn't fit, but we'll talk, we'll talk about that. So in the second reading from letter St. Paul to the Ephesians, St. Paul is saying, put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Put on your new self. That's a pretty cool message. Put on your new self. Yeah, I like that. It's a pretty cool message from St. Paul, which we're going to get to in a little bit. And then, in our gospel, um, back with St. John again. And there's a crowd following Jesus. And Jesus is like, look, I get it. You're following me because you heard about me multiplying the loaves and fishes. So you've heard. Right? So so you've heard about me. And he said, amen, I say to you, you were looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Right? And Jesus is basically saying, look, um, don't work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. And everyone's like, what do you mean, food that endures for eternal life? You mean, I'm never going to be hungry again? Ever? Yeah. And they're like, we want this. And Jesus is like, well, kind of, because I'm the bread of life. Yeah. And whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Yes. Oh, I am. Like that one song. That beautiful song, yes. yes. I am the bread of life. So, so it's a very interesting gospel. Yeah. Uh, kind of a continuation from last week. Yeah, and you know, I think what, as Father, was a Father Ken? Mm-hmm. Um, Father Ken mentioned that last week would be kicking off, we'd be kicking off, kicking off six readings. Yes. Um, known as the Bread of Life Yes, the discourse. Bread of Life Discourse. Yeah, so that was, um, that was real, that, that I learned, that's, I learned something new. Yes. Um, that Sunday from mm-hmm. this homily, but, um, but basically like, bread is gonna be a constant, like, theme for the next few weeks. Yeah. And if you remember last week, multiplying the loaves and fishes, this week Jesus is talking about how he's the bread of life. So it's awesome, and you're going to hear about bread for a long time. Yeah. For, okay. for a couple of weeks, like another month or so. And really what we wanted to focus on this week is the whole, like, uh, the opposition that Jesus puts, or like the, the comparison that Jesus mm-hmm. makes between the bread that you eat yeah. versus the bread of life. Yes. Like the bread that is like physical that you use to sustain you versus carbs. like this, yeah, carbs, <laughs> right? Versus like this bread that Jesus is offering. Yes. Right? And it's such a that great bread image. that he offers is himself. Yeah. Right? He's the bread of life. Yeah. And what I, what I love about what Jesus is saying is that he's saying, look, if you follow me and you, you come close to me or you draw near to me, you're going to be sustained in ways that like physical bread could never. Yeah. Right? And I guess I'm going to put on my teacher hat here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And give you a little econ lesson. Okay. Because that's what I talk about. That's what I teach. It's econ. All right, Mr. Lizardo. Yeah. So in econ, we talk about scarcity, right? It's like the first thing you ever hear in an econ class. It's like, what is scarcity? Mm -hmm. And scarcity is this idea that we're always going to want 
and need things for our entire life, right? We need food to eat to survive. And we're always going to be wanting and wanting, but there's a problem. We only have limited resources to fulfill those wants and needs, right? Yeah. Like you feel like you're in class right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like I'm learning. <laughs> and so that is sort of one of the problems of human nature and just like the physical body is that we are always constantly going to need things yeah. to survive. Yeah, That's just the reality us. of life. And the always, human body. Over and over and over needs. again. Yeah. Yep. But Jesus is saying, look, I'm kind of thinking beyond that physical self and talking more about like the spiritual or like this more, like this sustenance that's beyond that yeah. physical realm, right? Yeah, and that sustenance. I mean, we're talking about bread to eat versus the bread of life. Yeah. And um, I think he puts it so beautifully. And, and it's still like when I was a kid, I was not very clear. I'm like, bread of life, like yeah. bread, loaf. Yeah. Um, but by being drawn to him and being close to him in so many different ways, um, like Dean mentioned, that there, there's just some like some things that will be able, like he'll fulfill us in so many ways. Um, and what's beautiful about that is that there is more than enough of that to go around, mm -hmm. right? And there are many ways in which we can be drawn close to him, right? Think about the ways we are drawn to him in our daily lives, yeah. right? Like, you know, some people go to daily mass. Yeah. Some people take time in the morning to reflect. Um, you know, just on the day and, and, and pray yeah, um, and meditate. Prayers, yep. yep. Um, and a lot of like, you know, I mean, think about the ways people, you know, donate their time, talent, treasure, mm -hmm. um, and, or maybe even just kind of like taking a beat from your day and just doing a nice act for someone. There are so many ways that we may not even realize it, but there are ways that we are drawn to Jesus and um, that we may not even realize. Yep. And, and don't we feel good when we do things like that? Right. That's nothing that like no food or drink or whatever could could do to fulfill us. Yeah, and I think it's such in sharp contrast, the bread of life is in such sharp contrast to like the physical things that we desire. Because like, let's face it, we also as human beings suffer from this problem of always wanting more. Yeah, it's never not enough. Just, yeah, not just like our necessities, but all of the other things in life, our wants, right? Yeah. Like it's never, enough unfortunately it's just the <laughs> fault of human nature yeah. where once you have something you're gonna want more and yeah. once you have more you're gonna want even more than that yeah i'm looking at my my snack my bread right now and i really want to just finish it yeah, and i want some more of it right um but you're right right but that's that, like, yeah you just want new everything new phone coming out it's like shoot now like i'm unhappy with my old phone and it's like, your old phone still works as good, but there's just this constant desire. It's human nature and it's like this big fault yeah. in who we are where we just keep wanting and wanting and wanting. And the bread of life is in such sharp contrast where it's like it sustains you mm -hmm. and it fulfills you. And like it's, as I think you wanted to mention, it's sufficient yeah. for you. Yeah, yes. And it, it kind of just helps keep you grounded and it helps keep your, I mean, let's face it, like it helps keep keep a good moral compass for yourself yeah. as well, right? Keeps you grounded. Um, and you may not realize it, but like it's it's pro probably a big part of the reason why you are all such wonderful human beings and mm -hmm. why your friends and your family think you're so wonderful. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think it's, it's a good uh, a challenge this week to kind of think about the aspects of our lives where we may just continue to want more and more and maybe replace that with a little bit of Jesus time. Yeah. Maybe go to the table where Jesus is offering his bread and maybe that can yeah. help you out a little bit. Yeah, and really reflect on the things that you that are constant and that you're able to continue continuously sustain yeah. um, in your daily life, right? A lot of intangibles mm -hmm. um, that can probably fulfill you in so many other ways. So um, definitely take time to reflect on that and we look forward to talking more bread um, next week. All right. All right, take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.